some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Have mercy, sir. That Yankee Beast Jones is on his way. We're in danger, Sarah. We can't trust this pirate. He'd as soon have our heads as breakfast. When the time comes, you'll do what's right. Whatever the cost of liberty, Miss Phillips, I will pay it. It's win or die. You have one more chance, Miss Phillips. England or freedom. these waters. I'll weather a gale rather than cross that Yankee scoundrel. But, sir! We're a half day from England, and by goodness, sir, I mean to get home. Look out! It's coming down! Watch out! amusing news of our Captain Jean-Paul Jones. Indeed, Foreign Minister. My sources say he is plucking the British lion's whiskers. Oui, at their very door. He raids their towns and snaps up their ships. They call him Le Criminal. Let us hope that great crimes bring great rewards. What angers them most is the name he gave his ship. He named her after the French name of your amusing little book. Poor Richard's Albanac. Ah, Le Maxime du Bonhomme Richard. Wreckage in the water to Larbert! Here you are, miss. <coughs> How was our guest, Dr. Brooke? A good deal better than when I arrived. Captain... John Paul Jones, at your service. Miss, uh... Sarah Phillips. Very well, Sarah Phillips. We shall get you your dry clothes and some hot food and discuss just what I'm going to do with you. Might you be a wee bit hungry after your adventure, Miss Phillips? I feel badly about taking your cabin, Captain Jones. Oh, you've done me an honor, Miss Phillips. It's not every first lieutenant who has his captain as a roommate. <laughs> <laughs> but I must caution you, my friends. We've brought aboard Bonhomme Richard, a daughter of our enemy. Bonhomme Richard? You named your ship in honor of Benjamin Franklin? My friend and patron. And mine, sir. Sarah Phillips. The journalist. You've a keen way with a pen, young lady. Perhaps you will honor our expedition with a story. Please forgive me, Captain Jones. I have given up my writing. Indeed. May I ask why? You set a fine table, Captain. Hi, Wes. 
So the ship's an old East Indiaman. 900 tons of rotting timber. These 18-pound cannons were condemned by the French Navy, and I fear the crews as cast off as the ship and weapons. There are Americans, Irish, Scot, French, Swedish, Norwegian, Portuguese, East Indian, Royal Navy deserters, and a few not sure where they come from. Not to mention a hold full of British guests. You English prisoners aboard? Two hundred of them. These men were taken from captured ships, Miss Phillips. What do you intend to do with them? <coughs> Sarah? Sarah Phillips? Alec! You know this man? Since I could barely walk. Alec Spencer, son of my father's gamekeeper. I'm sure you two have much to discuss. If you'll excuse me. By heaven, Sarah! To see you here! Not the same knobby-kneed girl you taught to ride a horse. But how'd you end up in this nest of vipers? I was shipwrecked coming home from America. Had enough of those ruddy rebels, had you? Are they treating you well? Well enough. But with your help, it could get better. We're in spitting distance of home with a hold full of able British seamen. You mean help you escape? Of course. You want to strike a blow for England, don't you? Of course I do. Good lass. When the time comes, you'll do what's right. Alec, I must go. All ships have answered our signal but one, sir. <laughs> All right, the lion's leaving us again. It's mutiny, sir. Clap that captain in irons. I wish that I could, Mr. Dale. But unfortunately, I command by consent. He's within his rights. Sail ho! Four points about the beam to larboard! Mm, there's a pretty one. Looks like a private yacht. Sailing hard to meet us, too. He must think we're British. Let's aid his confusion. Raise the British flag, Mr. Dale. What is it, Captain? What is happening? I'm about to turn my quarterdeck into a theater. And you and that ballet costume, Miss Phillips, had better get below. Let me understand this. Your master, Sir John Anstruther, has sent you to borrow black powder. That's right, sir. He's got cannon and shot, but no powder. Have mercy, sir! That Yankee beast Jones is on his way! Is he now? You may depend on it, sir. With a convoy stuck in Bridlington Bay, waiting for the wind to shift. Mr. Dale. Give this gentleman what he needs to protect himself from that pirate Jones. And get him off my ship and make for Bridlington Bay. We've got to save the convoy. We're in danger, Sarah. We can't trust this pirate. He'd as soon have our heads as breakfast. Captain Jones seems like a man of honor. <laughs> honor. Ask him about the towns he's attacked, the merchant sailors, English sailors like me, who'll never see home again. Ask him! By attacking England, I hope to make the British even more weary of war. So they will surrender to us our freedom, and every ship looking for me is one fewer to burn Boston or Philadelphia. But you were born British! I was born a Scot, Miss Phillips. British by the point of a sword. The Royal Navy will hunt you with a hundred ships. They will hang you as a pirate. Aye, it may come to that. But America has been my favorite country since I first saw it at the age of 13. It's a land that values people for themselves. Not how big their houses are, or whether they have the title Lord before their names. 
Whatever the cost of liberty, Miss Phillips, I will pay it. But what of you, child? Why were you headed back to England? It is my home, Captain Jones. Indeed, you were born there. And why do you no longer wish to write for Dr. Franklin's newspaper? I cannot write what I do not believe in. Forgive me, Miss Phillips, but you strike me as someone who believes in liberty. Perhaps even as strongly as I do. You don't understand, Captain Jones. My father and the violence. All the pain I've seen. I'm so confused. I think I do understand, Les. But there comes a time in every life when one must decide what